Aha, hello there. Nice to see you. And welcome to today's class. Today, we're going to be talking hmm, all about computers. Brilliant. We're going to be looking at how we use computers, what kind of computer you have, what are the challenges we have with computers. Lots of language, vocabulary, adjectives, um, idioms, everything you could possibly need to talk confidently about the topic of computers. Looking forward to it. Let's begin. Let's begin with a little bit of this. Nice to see you here. Welcome. Um, good morning. If you don't know me, um, my name is Keith and I actually run a website called the Keith Speaking Academy. Um, this one here, as well as this YouTube channel, um, English Speaking Success. Oh, and if you didn't know, I've recently started a new YouTube channel, which is called, well, English Speaking Success Shorts. And it's short videos that just last for a minute to help you improve your English, in particularly pronunciation. So go and check it out and you can check out the website as well. Today we're looking at computers, right? We're going to look at all things around computers. And it's nice to be back to come and see everybody here. Um, I was off last week. I just had, well, to be honest, I only had a couple of days off just managed to catch up on a few things but lovely to be back looking forward to seeing you all here today let's see who's here kate pastbina hello nice to see you uh johnny beck from Uz uzbekistan mafusa hello we've got nisa hi everyone um karan farshid great angel says how's your holiday with the sunshine, yes, we did have quite a bit of sunshine. I um, had a few strolls on the beach because um, we live very close to the beach, fortunately. So it was nice. Irene says, hello, Keith, missed you last week. Well, missed you all of as well last week, yeah. But it is good to be back. So listen, we're coming back in today to talk about computers and everything computers. Great. Now, um, I realized recently somebody was asking me about the website and they didn't know I had a website. They said, oh, I watch all your videos on YouTube. I didn't know you had a website. I said, well, yes, I do. There's lots of interesting stuff on the website. Um, so I thought it might be beneficial just to show you all, um, well, the website as well, because and to show all of you how I can help you. So. I've got a very, very short video. It takes about a minute and a half, I think. Um, and it's actually called How I Can Help You, <laughs> which is strange, right? But this will just explain the different things that I have that may help you learning English and with your IELTS. Have a little look. How I can help you with my website, Keith Speaking Academy, you can get information about the IELTS test, format evaluation and the different parts of the test. Um, I've got the free live lessons, which means you can watch me on YouTube or Facebook and follow all of the lessons, download the lesson notes, or you can even study the different lessons directly on the website. You can download all of the old not the old, the previous lessons, PDF, and study those lessons. If you're interested in the family, go and watch that lesson. You can watch it, you can read it, and you can just download everything you need here. Um, also, if you want to look at the blog, there are different tips and ideas to help you, different areas of IELTS. And I've got the resources, different tools, guides on vocabulary pronunciation, study plans if you like, and so forth. Um, I can also help you with my online courses. If you want to study with me, you can find out about my online courses here on my website or Udemy. It's the same course, exactly the same course um, that you can get 
you can buy here and this tells you if you want to find out more you can watch the video and find out more about that course um, likewise if you want to focus on your fluency not just IELTS but general speaking you can sign up for my fluency course which is on Udemy um, and here Wow, Udemy, they've got lots of discounts on. They keep doing sales that I never know about. And here you can improve your fluency and learn different pronunciation and start to use the grammar without thinking. If you like, you can preview the course and watch one or two videos. And if it's right for you, you can go ahead and buy it. Other things, um, I can also help you through my YouTube channel. Lots of videos, but also recently the shorts. So this YouTube channel is fairly new and it's just learning English in less than a minute. Lots of um, pronunciation practice on different topics that you can do in just under a minute. Quite fun. Which city would you like to visit? So there you go. These are all different ways that I think I can help you. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Different ways to help you. As well, of course, as today's live lesson. Um, at the moment every Thursday. I'll be here next Thursday but just to flag up in August I am taking um, some time off to spend with the family. We hope to take a little road trip um, not to practice our IELTS speaking but really a road trip. Um, we want to drive across the north of Spain and take a few I don't know maybe a week or 10 days some time away just to relax to kick back, chill out, hang loose, all of those things, right? Exactly. So listen, nice to see you. Um, I can see we've got Su Li from China. Brilliant. Good that you can um, get through to us. That's great. Soy Bien Home. Nice to hear you again. Nice to see your messages. Um, Marat asks if I'm teaching lessons on a private platform. I'm not, I'm not teaching any private lessons at the moment, I'm afraid. K. Bal from Kazakhstan. Great to see you here. Paula, thanks for sharing the links. That's brilliant. Good. And Rachaya says, this is my first live lesson, though you are an amazing teacher. Thank you so much. That is very, very kind. Um, and it's great for all of you who are new here. To, uh, you know, welcome. Um, and for everybody, I'm going to actually show you today what we're going to do in a bit of detail. So let me do that thing where I switch around. Um, we're going to look at computers, right? That's going to be our main focus today. And the first thing we do normally is just have a look at some vocabulary, um, the essentials and some interesting vocabulary to talk about this topic. We're going to look at the uses of computers. And I did ask um, my Facebook group all, all about what they use their computer for. So we'll be looking at some of the uh, ideas there and the language. I'm going to dig into my toolbox. And this is where I actually go into my toolbox and drag out a useful tool to help you learn English better. We'll be looking at challenges of using computers because let's face it, it's not always easy riding, right? Sometimes we get lots of um, problematic situations. And of course, we'll be finishing up with some idioms and the final Kahoot is back, the Kahoot review. And if you don't know Kahoot, well, you'll have to stick in and uh, just watch and see what happens. Right. Computers. So the first thing, if I remember correctly, was vocabulary, right? OK, boom, let's come back. Vocabulary and let's boom, go into that little circle. We're going to start vocabulary on computers, right? So getting started. I mean, the first thing you do, obviously, with a computer is you turn it on, right? Um, you can turn on or actually there are two words we can use. We can also say to switch on. And the thing I want you to notice is we normally, with many, many phrasal verbs, is link, right? Turn on, to turn on. So it's almost, it's almost like this, right? It's almost non, <laughs> to turn on. Can you say that? To turn on. Right, exactly. And almost the same with chon, to switch on. I switch on my computer. Can you hear the chon? I switch on my computer. Non, I turn on my computer. 
So always good when you're um, making notes to practice your pronunciation as well, right? To turn on, um, to switch on. We can also, of course, say to start up. Tup, to start up. So we've got non, chon, tup. <laughs> start up. You can start up your computer. Um, sometimes we say to reboot. Um, so you can boot up a computer is to turn on. And if you're normally reboot is when you've turned on your computer, something's not working and you need to close to, to close it, to turn it off and turn it on again. So to reboot is basically to turn on again. Right. This as is to restart. It's exactly the same. So to reboot or to, to, to turn on again, to restart, to turn on again, right? And notice when we finish our work, we don't close the computer. That was the mistake I made. And that's a common Latin mistake, right? Um, like, I think in some languages they would say to close, but it's to turn off the computer, right? Um, to turn off your computer or to turn on. Oh, sorry, that's the same. We had that, not to turn. Let's to, oh, to turn on sleep mode. <laughs> to turn on sleep mode. So this, of course, in the time of climate change and global warming, is you want to look after the planet. So save electricity. So you can turn off your computer, but if you're just going away for a coffee or for lunch, you should turn on sleep mode. And that's just where this computer goes to sleep. It has a little nap, a little siesta a little kip and that's its chance uh, to use less electricity and then when you come back and you turn it on it takes less time right so you can turn on sleep mode all of those different ways of well turning on your computer basically <laughs> right let's have a look talking about computers now, I have a laptop. You can say I have a laptop to talk about the laptop you have. Um, very often, if you're mentioning the brand or the make, right, you would say I have uh, an Acer laptop or I have a Lenovo laptop. So normally the brand you would put before the word laptop or computer. I have a Lenovo laptop right so you would put the brand or the make right those are the words in english the lenovo is a brand or it's lenovo is a make um, the model is not the same the model is the particular kind of computer that lenovo make so that's a bit different um, but you would say i have a brand make laptop or computer of course so um, I have a MacBook. Of course, that's the other one, right? You can say I've got, instead of I have in Britain, we tend to say I've got. Both are okay, right? In America, it's more I have. In Britain, it's more I've got. But we do use both of those. You may say I have a PC. PC, of course, stands for good, personal computer. Um, and so most, I, I mean, I'm not an expert, right? But my understanding is most Windows computers are PCs and all of the Apple computers are Macs. I think Mac stands for Macintosh, right? Macintosh was one of the first computers they brought out. So a Mac is basically Apple, PC, Windows. As far as I understand, please do correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. Um, I tend to use a tablet or a smartphone. So yeah, I use or, you know, in English, we often put this phrase, I tend to, I tend to use, which means often, I often use, I tend to use, right? Basically, it just means I often or usually, either of those. But I usually use is okay, but it's a bit strange, right? I usually use, it's a bit strange. So it might be better to say, I tend to use. I tend to use a tablet or a smartphone, okay? 
Excellent, good. Nice, so some initial expressions there. Let's see what you guys have. Shravan says, I have a Lenovo laptop. Let's see what's the most popular laptop. Uh, Emmy has a Dill. I think you mean Dell, right, Emmy? Unless that's a new brand. Maybe that's a new brand I don't know about, but I think you mean a Dell laptop. <laughs> Uh, Sajinyas says, I have a black personal Mac. Right, good. Nasim, I have a Lenovo laptop. Lenovo's winning. Although, Siren says, I have a HP laptop. Nice. I have a HP laptop. Good. Pa Paula is confirming PC's personal computer. Thank you very much. Brilliant. And Afra says, I have Asus laptop, which is very handy. That's very, very nice. I'm going to add something here, Afra, and thank you for this, because this is such a common mistake, right? I have Asus. If you notice what I say, I have a Lenovo, right? It's really important that you put the a in. I have a, or in your case, because it's Asus, <clears throat> I have Vanessa's laptop, right? So make sure we get that um, that article in, which is very handy. Beautiful, beautiful English. Thank you very much, Afra. That's really, really nice. Brilliant. <clears throat> We've got Radvan and as my family, <coughs> the whole family's here. I tend to use a tablet or a smartphone, right? Excellent. Very, very nice. Nadja says, I tend to use my computer. Okay. Sajam, this is great. Putting it all together. Lovely practice. I tend to use a Lenovo laptop. Fantastic. Sony as well, says uh, Yazaman. Also quite popular. <clears throat> right. Yosra says, I have a MacBook Air. Right. Fantastic. Great. And Rangana has, I've got a gaming laptop. So I'm guessing you're a gamer, Rangana. <laughs> I'm guessing you're a gamer. Brilliant. <laughs> Which is, we're going to talk about all the different things we do with our laptops very shortly. Let me move on. Let's have a look at adjectives because <clears throat> there are different ways that we can talk about um, computers, right? So adjectives, <clears throat> let's talk about Describing a laptop, if your laptop is one of these old-fashioned big laptops, right, very heavy um, and very big, you can say it's hefty or clunky, right? Clunky. I can look up clunky. It's great. My computer can help me. He clunky, right? It means solid, heavy and old-fashioned. Even last year's laptops look clunky. It's a lovely word, right? Clunky. It actually sounds big and heavy. I've got a clunky microphone, right? It's very big and heavy. And the old laptops are quite clunky. Love that word. Great. Hefty is similar, right? Hefty just means big and heavy, right? So that's more big and hefty. So let me actually put these separately so that we can just make a note so it's crystal clear for everybody. So that's just big and heavy. Great. Where is a, a, a clunky laptop? What did it say? It says big uh, and old fashioned. It's more about being kind of almost out of date, big and old fashioned, clunky. You know, the, the old clunky mobile phones. Now, you're probably too young to remember. But like when the first mobile phone phones came out and I was a gosh, I was in a t I was a teenager. Um, they were like big, massive, huge, heavy things like satellite phones. They were really clunky, hefty as well. Bulky, we can say. So bulky is um, similar, right? It takes up a lot of space. Um, so bulky takes up a lot of space, basically. Space, space. 
a bulky desktop. Again, in times gone past, many desktops were bulky. A lot of gaming desktops are quite bulky because they they not only do you have the monitor, but you have this big bulky computer. So it takes up a lot, lot of space, right? Um, now, the opposite, if you like, you could say slick. And slick kind of means quite thin, fashionable, um, glossy, right? Nice looking. Let's say thin, fashionable, um, good look, nice looking. Not good looking, I'll say nice looking. That's a slick tablet. So the MacBook Air, right, is a slick, it's a slick tablet. Um, some of the new mobile phones are very slick, right? Thin, fashionable, lightweight, obviously, not heavy. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and nifty, nifty kind of means small and fashionable. Ah, it's a nifty little, uh, nifty little mobile phone you've got there, a nifty little tablet. Um, of course, small is relative, right? I mean, how small is small? So nifty you can use for different things, but it does, it just means kind of fashionable, it's small, and you can use it for other things. But here, let's talk about computers, right? So these are some quite nice adjectives if you want to describe your computer. Um, so you could start putting it all together, right? Um, I have a, what, well, I have a hefty Lenovo laptop, right? You could start putting everything together. K, almost like you're thinking on the, in the, on the same wavelength. K and I, K and Keith, we're on the same wavelength. I have still a clunky Samsung laptop because it has a slick keyboard, right? Interesting, very good. I'm going to just help you, K, okay, with your position of your adverb, right? And your spelling. And this is great because a lot of people make this mistake, right? A lot of people I have still. I still have. So put your adverb here before the verb. I still have. I still have a clunky Samsung laptop. Dum, dum, dum. Because it has a slick keyboard. Oh, that's the reason you keep it. Because it has a slick keyboard. Lovely. Very, very nice. Great. Kling Kang Kong. <laughs> King Kang Kong. Come on. The other day, my daughter and I, we were watching um, Godzilla versus King Kong, right? I mean, it was one of the funniest, most confusing films I've ever seen. I really didn't understand the characters. And I don't mean King Kong. I understood King Kong. I didn't understand the human characters um, on Skull. I, I was just mad. Don't if you If you're tempted to go and watch King Kong and Godzilla, don't. Waste of time, utter rubbish. But we had a good laugh together. <laughs> so King Kang Kong, I like nifty gadgets. Nice, very nice. Thank you very much. Fio says iPhone 12 mini is a nifty one. It is a nifty one indeed. Yes, I've got my eye on that. <clears throat> Pradeep says, I have a nifty laptop from my father as a birthday gift. Lovely, very nice language. What a good father you have. <laughs> Facebook user, what a plethora of information. Well, yes, it's a lot, but just pick out one or two that you'd like to practice. <clears throat> Art, um, RTM, I changed my clunky Sony laptop with the brand new MacBook. Right, right. Very, very good. When you change something... RTM and everybody, you change A for B. I'm going to change my coffee for a cup of tea. I'm going to change my clunky Sony laptop for the brand new MacBook. It's You'll never look back. Seriously, you will never look back. I think the MacBooks are fantastic. That's what I use. <clears throat> and no, they don't sponsor me. <laughs> yeah, I have a clunky laptop. That's from Mohammed. Yes, lots of people do, Mohammed. Yes. <clears throat> Egan says, I have a nifty Samsung tablet. Fantastic. Brilliant. So you're putting all the language together. You're making some really nice phrases. Let's move up and just talk briefly about activities, right? So what you can do with your computer. 
So once you've got your nifty new uh, Samsung laptop with the slick keyboard, what can you do? Well, you can install new software. So we talk about installing software. Well, of course, you have to download first, right? So let's so normally these go together, download and install. <clears throat> download and install new software. You install the latest updates. So most computers actually give you a little pop up window and tell you to install the latest updates um, <clears throat> because it's safer, right? Give more security to your computer. We talk about downloading an app, an application. Nowadays, we just tend to say an app, right? The official word is application, but you can just say an app. I've got lots of apps on my phone. Do you know that one of the apps I use the most, right, on my phone is Google, I hope you can see it, Google Translate. I use this all the time. It's a great app. It's a nifty little app. Google Translate. Um, and the opposite of downloading, when you're taking, if you're giving, then you're uploading a file, right? To upload a file. <clears throat> so think of download as taking, uploading as giving, like offering a sacrifice to the moon, uploading something, uploading a file. <clears throat> there you go. Keith goes all esoteric again. Um, of course, you want to be careful because you want to make sure that you back up your computer and to back up is to make a copy of the data, right? Basically copy your data. <clears throat> so make sure that you back up your computer. Just notice, especially if you're writing, that the verb is two words to back up because it's a phrasal verb to back up. But when you use a noun, it's a backup. It's one word, a backup, to make a backup of files, just in case you're writing. <clears throat> of course, when you're speaking and you make a chunk, it's a backup. It's a cup, like a cup. Coffee, muffin, Wi-Fi. It's a cup, backup, a backup, or to backup. You can't tell the difference, right? But when you're writing, there is a difference. <clears throat> Likewise, you may want to turn on or turn off your firewall. And that's your protection, right? Your firewall protects you from viruses. <clears throat> to protect you. To protect you from. It's the prepositions that are difficult, right? Everybody knows firewall. Everybody knows protect but not everybody gets protect from, right? It's a bit like Artyom would said before, to change a 4B, change 4, protect from. Um, to protect you from, I'm going to highlight that, viruses. I'm not going to highlight that. Great. Firewall, <clears throat> great word. And here, I just got, I was going to add some very common binomials. You know, like black and white? So a binomial is where you have A and B. And the pronunciation, by the way, these are really interesting. And if, you, if, you, if you're studying English, you, you should study binomials. We say A and B, just to make it clear. So binomials is this idea, it's a kind of vocabulary, basically, where you have A and B, but we pronounce it A and B, and A and B. If you've heard about B and B, you've heard about B and B in England, right? A B and B is a bed and breakfast. So it's a kind of hostel, B and B. Air B and B, of course you have. So binomials with computers, we've got copy and paste, right? Notice it's not and, it's an. Copy and paste. Copy something, paste it somewhere else, right? This is copy and paste. Cha-cha. Cha-cha. Copy and paste. Or cut 
cut and paste where you don't copy but you take it away and paste cut and paste try and say it because let's get the pronunciation right cut and paste copy and paste can you just copy and paste you need to cut and paste nice you need to cut and paste okay in this quiz you need to drag and drop right drag is to pull and drop you know in the quizzes sometimes you drag the word down and you put so it's to pull and put drag and drop drag and drop so those are nice nice binomials right for computers and then of course you've got scroll down da, 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 scroll up is to go up or to go down when you're scrolling right all of that is poof, vocabulary for computers that's a lot of stuff right a lot of stuff let's see how you're doing oh some good <laughs> yeah let's let's just have a look at some of your phrases because these are good uh, aos says a slick phone will become a clunky phone after years yeah very very true yes um Nyung says i have a bulky laptop yes uh, Kang says, I still use, oh, look, good student, I still use, you've learned that very quickly, thank you to the previous student, I still use a clunky Dell laptop, but I think this, very useful till now, I think this is still very useful until now, ah, right, I think this is very useful until now, good, great. <laughs> Gaurav says, Nifty is a computer course. Ah, right, it's the name of a computer course. It's a good name, yes. Great. Uh, Tavia says, I have a lightweight Surface laptop with a Nifty keyboard. Brilliant. Here you go, says, I have a MacBook Air, which is synonymous with Nifty. Well, yes, I would totally agree, because I am an Apple buff. <laughs> a big fan of Apple. Great. Ha says, I seldom use firewall to protect my laptop from viruses. Interesting. You're very, very uh, throwing caution to the wind. Just remember, we again, put in that um, article, ah, I seldom use a firewall to protect my laptop. Well, be very careful what you're surfing, my friend. <laughs> Mind you, if you've got Apple, they have a built-in firewall, right? So you may not need one or whichever computer you use. Who knows? Who knows indeed? Right. Um, I need to have, what do I need to have? I need to have a drink. So let me play this. Ooh. Great. I go, ooh, because it's, um, it's ginger. It's got a nice kick. Brilliant. Good. Um, so what am I looking for? I'm looking for the next thing. Use of computers. Yes. So we've been looking at vocabulary, right? Um, let's have a look at the next thing, which is use of computers. What do we use a computer for? Now, as we look at this, I'm... As I mentioned the other day, right, um, you can, as I mentioned the other day, as I mentioned at the start of the class, um, I asked the guys in the Facebook group what they use their computer for. By the way, if you don't know the Facebook group, um, you can come and join us. I've actually got a Facebook page, which you can find out more stuff about Keith Speaking Academy. Um, but if you want to join the group, it's the Keith's Mastermind community for IELTS. We just focus on IELTS speaking, but you can come and join the group. And um, now and again, now and again, binomial, now and again, um, I go in and ask them different questions, um, especially about the live lesson. And I was asking them about um, what they use a computer for. It was very interesting. And I'm going to share some of my comments with you 
but I noticed two mistakes time and time and time again. <laughs> Binomial, time and time again. Binomials, they're everywhere. Um, so I'm going to show you what the mistakes were. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> uh here we go right the number one mistakes so the first one and i think you know this now i use laptop for watch movies there's actually two mistakes there i have only smartphone and there's another mistake so there are three mistakes here in the comments below can you just write down what the mistakes are Naja Mohammed would like to join the Facebook group. Please do go and join. Just go and go and join. Answer the questions. Join. You're in. It's all there. It's all free. Okay, we've got Bexod has picked out the first one for watching. For watching movies. Right. Pradeep as well says for watching movies. No name says a laptop. No name. No place. No name, a laptop. A laptop, right. As, not Zenith, you told me it was Zenith, right? Zenith says to watch. Ah, to watch, to watch movies. Right, interesting. Let's see. Zamborishna says I use a laptop. Somebody else says for watching, Nazrin. Yi says for watching movies. Oh, Twan says only have. Ah, oh, that's interesting. That's brought up another question. Right. My laptop for watching. Interesting. So lots of really good things. I'm going to tell you what I was thinking and then... Um, I'll put the other possibilities. So let's take the first sentence first. There are several possibilities. I'm going to copy, copy and paste, copy and paste. Okay, so the first one is, da, 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 da. I use a laptop, right? And we've mentioned this a couple of times today. Um, I use a laptop. We must have that um, article in there, okay? I use a laptop. And for watching, yeah, for watching movies. If you've got a preposition before a verb, it's always ing. Simple rule, right? Preposition before a verb, the verb must be ing for watching. And I think that's true 99% of the time because it's English. I'm sure there is one or two exceptions, but 90% of the time, you said 99. Okay, 99% of the time, um, preposition plus a verb is with the gerund, the ing, right? For watching. I use a laptop for watching movies, right? So that is the first possibility. Now, some other people brought up other possibilities. I use my laptop for watching movies is absolutely possible, right? That's also possible. Um, I use a laptop if we change if we keep watch then we can also change to right i use a laptop to watch movies so there are two possibilities for watching or to watch great the second phrase i have only smartphone <laughs> so yes let me paste and copy I have only, the first one to mention is the article. Ah, I have only a smartphone. I have only a smartphone. And the other one that somebody pointed out was absolutely right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Cut and paste, Keith. Cut and paste. I only have a smartphone. Yeah, I've only got a smartphone. I only have a smartphone. So just to make it clear, if we use got, I've only got a smartphone. Brilliant. Okay. So let me put 
the unhappy face, just to make it clear, right, that this is not correct. Paste and copy, not correct. These are all correct, but I think that's pretty clear. I hope that's pretty clear. These are good, right? I use a laptop for watching movies. I use my laptop or I use his laptop for watching movies or I use a laptop to watch movies. Um, I only have a smartphone. I've only got a smartphone, a smartphone. Nice. Good. <laughs> and of course, my, yeah, I've only got, well, I've only, I've only, I've only got my smartphone. In, in, in certain contexts, yes, you could say that. Yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> Guarav, it's not my birthday. Stop saying it's my birthday. It's not. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Use of computers. So let's go on. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to show you um, a, I'm going to show you two things, okay? I'm going to show you, first of all, this picture. And this picture is a word cloud of all the comments you made in the Facebook book page group. Where is it? I made a word cloud. There was a word cloud somewhere. Let's have a look. Is it here? Yes. Here's the word cloud. Look at that. So this is a word cloud of all of your comments talking about what you use a computer for. Worktop, laptop, reply, computer, watching movies. So see, clearly watching movies is very popular. Reply, I suppose, is for emails, I'm guessing, or messages. Um, desktop was popular. Studying English was popular, which is nice to see. Learning as well. Editing videos. Work, of course, a lot of people using it for work. Job came up a lot. Interesting business purposes. Lots and lots of words. But it's interesting to see, right, what the most common words were. Um, so the next thing, I, I'm going to show you a very short video. It's a screenshot um, screen recording of the comments. I've just picked out one or two comments and made my own comment about it. So listen carefully to the corrections that I make so you can see the mistake and then correct them yourself because these are very common mistakes people make. It's also very interesting just to see what people what people said, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look. This is the Facebook group. This is what people said. So I asked them how, right, I'm just going to have a look at some of your answers to this question. What kind of computer do you have and what do you use it for? Thank you very much, all of you who've answered. Um, I'm sorry I haven't got time to answer everybody. Um, I'm just going to pick out some of the different answers and comment on what you've said. Um, first of all, Saka Saka, laptop. I basically use it for reading. Nice. I like, I basically use it for reading. That's great. Laptop, I would say a laptop. Wacas, I have a HP Core i7 laptop. Great. You could be a salesperson. Perfect. And I use it to watch, Mr. Keith. I use it to watch. Great. You use it to watch my video lectures. Great. I am now a fan of yours too. Mira Patel, I use laptop. Notice again, it should be I use a laptop for rendering images. So I prefer laptops with high graphic cards. Interesting. You've got laptops, right? But it should be high graphic cards. Nice, Mira. Very good. Um, Sonia says Mac Air, just business. <laughs> I guess just for business, I think I would say. Just for business. Nina says, I have a fixed one. I guess you mean a desktop one, which I used when I was preparing my thesis. It's actually used by my children without connection to read text, draw lovely pictures. Oh, it's used by my children without a connection. Notice the article again, without a connection to read text, draw lovely pictures. Great. 
I've also a mobile one, right, which a mobile, like a portable laptop, which helps me actually in working, studying and following all what is happening all over the world. Excellent, Nina. Very, very nice. Roshni, I have a desktop computer. Perfect. With the A, ah, very good. And it's mostly used for educational purposes. Lovely language. Very, very nice. Used for educational purposes. Arzan, nice to see you again. Long time no see. I've got a laptop. Nice. And basically, I use it for almost everything. I love the use of basically again here. Also, nice expression here. It comes in handy when I want to read, watch movies, pay my bills. <laughs> yes, especially pay my bills. During the pandemic, it helped me with my teaching job as well. As you know, the world switched to online learning. Very nice. Switch to online learning. My apps and OS are always up to date, as well as my online security program. These are must-have tools. Lovely. When it comes to an efficient and user-friendly laptop computer. Very nice, Arzun. Lovely. Tai Tung Hong. I have had a Dell laptop since I was a fresher. Lovely. So not only I have, but I have had since... I was a fresher. A fresher, I think, is one of those American terms, which I assume means first year at university, right? Freshman, I think. Yes. <laughs> one that we don't say but in, in, in England, but I've watched so many American TV series, I know. At that time, I use it. I used it in the past, right? I used it for preparing presentations. So if it's for, it's with the gerund for preparing presentations or watching many films. But now I often spend a lot of time in my laptop. You can't spend time in your laptop. It has to be on your laptop <laughs> to study English. Uh, great with the English speaking success channel. Great, Tran. I am now your number one fan. Brilliant. Very, very nice. What else have we got? Um, Thomas Jackson for gaming. Absolutely. Check in box. <laughs> Anuja says, I have two laptops. One is for office stuff. That's nice. One is for office stuff. Brilliant. And the other for my personal use. I use it mainly for blog postings and watching movies. For blog postings and watching. So again, because it's for, I use it for watching movies. But very nice, Anuja. Very nice. Great. Moving on. Kao Aman. I possess a laptop of HP company. A possess sounds a bit formal here. I would just say I have. I've got a HP laptop. It has sleek and compact body. Remember the A ah as well. It has A, ah, sleek and compact body. I have modified its body with graphics. Nice. I use Windows 7 more for office work. My kiddo also takes her classes on it. I love it. Very nice informal language. Very good. Let's move down. We've got Huda. I have a laptop, Acer, or I have a I have a NASA laptop. I got it as a present. Nice. When I graduated from, from university, graduate from university without the. You don't need the. And I've been using it since then. Good use of the present perfect continuous. I do presentations, lesson plans, and edit pictures using it. I'm guessing you're a teacher then. I also save my wedding photos and all those sweet memories on it. Lovely. I do use it every now and again, but I use my smartphone more frequently nowadays. Very nice, very natural. Lovely, Huda. Very, very good. We've got Dui, Dui Sti. I have a Dell laptop, which is renowned for its super duper durability. <laughs> Lovely. I'm a digital marketeer now, so I can't imagine how my life be with, would be without my laptop. That's lovely. I can't imagine what, I would say what, how or what, yeah, what my life would be without my laptop. I can't imagine what my life would be like without my laptop. Great. Time for one more. Let's come all the way down. Fatma, I have a MacBook Pro. <laughs> Remember the ah. OK, brilliant. Fantastic. I'm going to stop us there. Some really, really nice. Um, well, some very, very nice phrases just to give you a flavor. Thank you very much, everyone. Indeed, thank you very much for all of those posts. And um, I apologize. That I cannot answer all of them, but some really nice posts there and some good language. 
Great. So if you want to join us, come to the Facebook group. Just join up. Um, look for Keith Mastermind Community. Um, you'll find us there in Facebook and you can come and join us. A um, couple of questions came up. One is it's very difficult to see the screen. I realize that um, the, the writing is so small if you're on your phone. I will try and make it bigger in future and maybe make the video shorter because I realize it's hard to see. Another thing somebody noticed, uh, absolutely right, my mistake, smartphone. Of course, when you're writing it, it should be one word, a smartphone. Otherwise, you're talking about a smartphone, smart as an adjective. But here it's the noun, right? So it should be one word. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. Excellent. <clears throat> OK, so the... Just going back then, looking at what people said, some nice language, right? Um, so we've got either I use my laptop to watch movies, right? Or I use it for watching movies. Both of these are fine. We can also say I make use of it, right? Just to change. Instead of I use, I make use of it to do something, to do some research to follow the news, to play games, to check my Facebook status, maybe, right? So there are different expressions we can use to talk about, I use my laptop to, I make use of it to do some research. If you're a student or um, maybe a teacher or, or not, right? I make use of it to do some research on how to, cook or how to bake, right? You can do research on that as well. Moving down, um, I use it for watching movies. That's fine. Um, we can also say, right, I use it for, or it's really handy for watching movies, right? It comes in handy for watching movies <laughs> or whatever. Um, I'll put that as the example because that's the, the one that a lot of people say. <clears throat> so handy means convenient, right? Convenient. It's handy. It's easy to put in your hand, right? It just means it's convenient. Oops. It's really handy. Come in handy is to... Be convenient is the same thing, really. It's the same thing to be convenient. It comes in handy. Copy and paste. Or to be or to become convenient. Okay. So it comes in handy for watching movies. It's really handy for coding, right? The tablet is really handy for watching movies. It's true. Um, my software that I have comes in handy for preparing presentations. Um, my smartphone, right? it's really handy for surfing the internet. It's really handy for shopping, maybe, right? Shopping online. It's far too handy, far too dangerous for shopping online. <laughs> you just click, 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 buy at one click. I always disable that on Amazon because one-click buying is so dangerous. You just end up, yes, 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 buy so many things. <clears throat> okay, um, great. So these are different ways we can talk about it. I use it for, and just notice when we say for, normally that becomes f. So instead of saying I use it for watching movies, which is a bit like how the robots speak. I use it for watching movies, for f, f, for watching movies, for coding. I use it for coding. Yeah, you can hear that. I use it for coding. Great. Now we can have for plus a verb, right? Verb and ing. Basically, I use it for blah, blah, blah. I use it for coding. But we can also use it plus noun. I use it plus a noun, right? 
um, or, or an adjective and a noun. So I use it for work. Somebody, you remember, said, I use it for work stuff, for work things or for tasks, for work stuff. That's nice. Nice in formal English for IELTS speaking. That's great. Or I use it for business. Same thing. I use it for personal use. I use it for personal use. Notice the difference between use, z, z. It's a voiced z as a verb. Use and use, use. There's no voice. Use, it's a s, right? So here you've got the s sound. Here you've got the z sound. I use it for personal use. Yep. Can you hear? Can you make the sound? I use it for personal use. Good. Excellent. So the noun is an S sound. The verb is a Z, Z sound. Or for educational purposes. Somebody said that's a lovely expression, right? For educational purposes. Or for almost everything, somebody said. I use it for almost everything, which is true, right? We use the computer for almost everything. Brilliant. Lots of different ways and expressions of talking about use. Um, nice. Let's just have a quick look. Sahar says, oh, I love your avatar. Looks like a Disney avatar. It comes in handy to do some research. Dang Ming says, it comes in handy for improving my English listening skill. Perfect. Hei Sun says, it's handy for surfing and shopping. Very nice. Really nice. Pradeep says, it really comes in handy. I like that. I like the adverb. It really comes in handy for keeping in touch with friends and family on social media. That's great. You've got your adverb. Really. Keeping in touch. It's a nice chunk, a nice kind of idiomatic expression. Friends and family, binomial. Brilliant, Pradeep. Nice. Emmy, today's my birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Emmy. Happy birthday to you. By the way, great. I love the cake. Have a fantastic day, Emmy. Um, those of you who are asking earlier, my birthday is on the 12th of August. So please don't say happy birthday to me yet. <laughs> Brilliant. Good. So Pooja, this is nice. Let's share this. Pooja says, I have. Um, you're almost there. I love everything else you've got. I'm just going to add one small thing, Pooja, and you can probably guess it's a. Ah, I have a Mac Airbook which is sponsored by my company. Lucky you. It's very sleek. Good. You can have sleek or slick. Both words are okay. An extremely lightweight. I use it for everything like bill payments to check the emails and check social media. Pooja, spot on. That is great. Nice. Very, very nice. Um, what else? <laughs> Cool dip. It's really handy for reading books. It's really handy for watching YouTube, says Marta. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Lots of nice things here. Okay, so let me move on. Let me change for the moment. I'm just going to switch around. Use of computers. Um, what's next? Ah, toolbox. Toolbox is next, which means, which means what? It means it's time for this then, if it's toolbox time. <laughs> Bear with me. Toolbox is um, a little bit where I like to share with you a tool that I either use or I 
tell my students to use or I've discovered recently that I think can help you learn English. Um, this one's really simple, but I think it's really useful, right? Um, it's over here. Da -da -da -da. Toolbox. It's the Chrome screenshot for YouTube, right? So if you're watching YouTube, you may find yourself trying to take screenshots of useful parts of the video, but Chrome already has a tool to do that. Let me show you very basically how this works, right? If I open my Chrome, um, I don't have it, but I'm going to install it now. If you go to this link and if guys, if moderators, you could chat, share this link with everybody. Um, of course, you need a Chrome browser, uh, I'm afraid. But if you go to here, you'll be able to... Oh, I have got it connected already. Remove from Chrome. So where is it? Uh, come on, it's not there. Extensions. I'm showing you all my extensions. I shouldn't be showing you all my extensions, should I? Okay, the important point is that it's already there. So let's go to YouTube. Let's imagine you're watching a video on YouTube. What does video, what does YouTube suggest I watch today? It suggests I watch myself. <laughs> I'm not going to watch myself. Um, but maybe you could watch yourself. Suggests I watch myself. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to watch another video. Let's watch another video. Um, but maybe you could watch yourself. another video let's watch another video okay here we are any useful idioms for any topic i've just got too many screens going just a moment the mill. okay so you're watching this right run of the mill and you and you want to take a screenshot that little thing adds a screenshot on your um screen here right so i just press it and look it downloads and I get the screenshot, which you can't see, but I'll share it with you. So that screenshot, this is getting complicated, but not to worry, not to worry. The screenshot goes into my download area and I can show you what it's just given me. I can add it to my, um, you see, that's the screenshot that it's given me, run of the mill. Fantastic. So wherever you are, if I'm back on a run of the mill, run of the mill. Can you say that? Run Let me take off the captions. Is Dave. He's trying to learn a language the traditional way. Uh, come on. The mill. Run of the mill. Look, here's another one. None other than or here. Right, this comes up, you think, right. Then you just press the screenshot and you can get it and instantly it downloads. Um, and it's there in my download area. And so if I just want to upload it, that's it. That's the download. It gives it me instantly. So it gives me instant screenshots, basically, of YouTube. ta, -ta to do just as you're watching um, for whatever videos, especially educational videos. I think it's a nice little tool that's well worth downloading on Chrome and it can just save you a little bit of time, right? That was it. Great, that was the toolbox. Okay, so after the toolbox, what comes up next? It's time for me to shift around too many of my tools I've got over here. After the toolbox, challenges of using computers, okay? So I'm going to ask you, first of all, before I share all my ideas, what challenges do computers give you? What are the challenges of using computers? For example, it's difficult to be connected to the Internet sometimes because you can't always get Wi-Fi. Things like that. What do you guys think? What are the challenges? Um, of using computers. 
let me know in the comments and I'll have some coffee muffin and what well coffee no it's not even coffee ginger tea and wi-fi the muffin will come later mm. great some ideas here it can be easily damaged by malware and scamming poor internet connection yeah cyber criminals yeah good battery dies glitches absolutely you sometimes get glitches in computer especially during live lessons that happens to me learning new software that's a good one yes a man that's a difficult challenge learning new software being a mouse potato a mouse potato I think you mean a couch potato, don't you? Or maybe that's an expression, <laughs> a couch potato. Maybe you have a different expression, but I think you mean a couch potato. Mm -hmm. Anastasia said viruses are one of the greatest problems. Yes, glitches to the system as well. Difficult to connect to the Wi-Fi, yep absolutely cyber attacks battery problems all of these are absolutely good spending a lot of time yes that is the challenge of using computers spending too much time risks of virus great excellent great so lots of um challenges there i'm going to add some and then i'll add some of the, yours there as well brilliant let me bring these up. Challenges of using computers. <laughs> they do exactly what you tell them, not what you want them to do. Right? So computers, you're telling them to do something and they don't do it, but they actually do what you're telling them. But you actually want them to do something different, if you understand me. Very true. Um, they are so fragile, right? Fragile means easy to break they are so fragile and easy to break right um somebody talked about the battery the battery can run out too quickly that's a problem as well other challenges um they often have compatibility issues it's a nice collocation compatibility issues so, for example, I can't share my Mac pages with a Windows computer, right? I have to convert it. Insufficient storage space. That's a nice collocation. Insufficient storage space can be problematic, right? That's interesting. Instead of saying that blah, blah, blah can be a problem, right? Wi-Fi connection can be a problem. You can make it a bit more sophisticated right and you can say can be problematic use the adjective instead of the noun it just sounds a little bit more sophisticated a bit more complex nice language right can be problematic stress the a ah. problematic um, the battery can be problematic Malware can be problematic. There is a threat from malware and viruses and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> cyber attacks, that's the other one. There's a threat from malware, viruses, and cyber attacks good old autocorrect thank you <laughs> um glitches can be problematic right glitches somebody said glitches can be problematic i said that <laughs> somebody said glitches happen what else 
something interesting somebody said. I'm trying to remember. I think that was it. Th those are kind of some of the main ones. Anything else we've got? Forgetting passwords can be problematic. Hey, soon. Very, very nice. Very nice. Bex, uh, Bexod, also this is nice. Stability of internet connection can be an issue. Great. This is nice. Outdated hardware sometimes makes my computer become painfully sluggish. <laughs> Love it. Sluggish means slow, right? Very nice. I, and I get your problem. Absolutely. Phishing is another one. Phishing is a problem. Uh, price can be a problem. Well, very true. That's true. Price can be a problem with everything, right? <laughs> okay, great. So those are some things we can talk about, about different uh, challenges that we've got. Excellent. Challenges. So we've looked at, I'm going to move on because we've looked at the toolbox. Um, we've been looking at challenges of computers. What's next? Idioms. I'm going to move on and take a bit of time looking at some idioms for talking about computers. So bear with me a moment. This is a tricky one because I really racked my brains to think about idioms, not using the word computer, but idioms we can use to talk about computers and using computers. It's a different thing, right? If you look up on the internet, idioms with computers, it gets things like bells and whistles and I don't know, strange idioms that have the word computer but are not really about computers. So I was thinking about this and I came up with these, but you've got some more, I'm sure, right, for idioms. Let's have a look. I've got the following. Let me make it slightly bigger. I feel brain dead is the first one. So very often when you're working at your desk, and you're working on your computer, working at your desk on your computer, you get very tired and your brain gets very sluggish, slow. And you can feel oof, like you want to sleep, right? I feel brain dead, right? It means I can no longer, no longer focus. Or I feel sluggish. I'm going to use that word because I love that word. I feel sluggish. And they're basically the same. I feel brain dead and I feel sluggish. It's very, very similar, right? I can no longer focus. So after you've been working for a couple of hours or even three hours or the whole day, right, you will feel brain dead. If you feel brain dead, then you say, I need to focus. I need to get some energy. I need to get my brain in gear. So to get your brain in gear is to, to start to focus, to start concentrating on what you're doing. concentrating normally in order to work right I need to get my brain in gear it's normally when you're beginning work I mean you could go for a coffee to get your brain in gear you could do but normally when you're sat at your desk and you say right I'm gonna begin I really need to get my brain in gear I need to start focusing another expression I've just had a brain wave a brainwave is a great idea. I guess I got I got hooked on the word brain, right? <laughs> I've just had a brainwave. I've had a great idea. Brilliant. Another expression, and I think often when we're looking at computers and some people get very technical, especially IT people, right? They start talking, they use technical language and difficult words because that's the language of computers. And if you don't understand, you say, listen, can you say it in layman's terms? 
can you say it in layman's terms? Means can you say it simply? Use simple language. Say it simply, please. <laughs> Just say it in layman's terms. A very common expression, I think, especially with computers and IT, because sometimes your IT managers, they speak a different language. Seriously, I listen to my, I used to listen to my IT manager. And when I was working in a big company before, it wasn't English. I don't know what language he spoke. I mean, he spoke English, but I couldn't understand it. So sometimes I would say, can you please say it in layman's terms? And he said, yes, just turn off your computer. Ah, OK, thank you. <laughs> Similar expression, cut out the jargon. Cut out the jargon, right? So the jargon is the technical language or the special language for a field. So it just means, again, say it. Stop. Don't use technical words. Say it simply. Don't use technical words. So these are all expressions to use with your IT friends and IT manager. Of course, the last one, I like to surf the net. Right to browse is the same. To look at. So these are idiomatic because you're not surfing, literally. Because surfing is on the waves in the sea. Um, but you're browsing, you're looking at, to browse the internet, to look at the internet. And that's such a common one, right, I think. Okay, Pradeep says, I've just received a brainwave from Mr. Keith to use on speaking part three. Nice, good. <laughs> Brilliant. Can you say it in English? Yeah, exactly. Can you say it in English? Jargon, language that is difficult to understand. Nice, very good. Great. Bez Bexod, somebody brainwashes him, maybe, right? Possibly. I'm not that tech savvy. That's a nice expression. Yeah, let's put that in. I'm not really tech savvy. I actually like that. I'm going to keep that. I'm not that tech savvy. So I don't know much about computers. Bear with me. Let me put this up here. I don't know much about computers. That's nice. Ahmed Sa, thank you very much for your message. That's great. Somebody says, I often feel brain dead at work. Yes. Any others we've got? Navi says, I'm susceptible to feeling brain dead because of the distractions from social media. This is good, Rahul. I also do this, right? I need to meditate to get my brain in gear. Yes. Naja says, my brother always speaks with difficult words. I used to tell him to cut out the jargon. Nice. This is good, Sally. My internet connection has been hit and miss today. Yep. It's been uh, a bit hit and miss, means it's on and off, right? It's not very stable. So that's nice. The internet connection. <laughs> my fingers are typing much faster than my brain. The internet connection, my brain's a bit sluggish, is a bit hit and miss today. Equals not very stable. That's a nice expression to use, right? It's a bit hit and miss. We can use it in many contexts, but I think it look, it works very well here. Nice. <clears throat> surfing can be used for people. Yeah, of course. Surfing people surf on the sea, right? Especially here in Santander, everybody surfs on the sea. AOS says, I usually surf the net all morning. Yes. I Google about it later. Why is Google used as a verb? Well, Paula, because because we, we, we because yes, <laughs> because it's become accepted. It's one of the new 
um, technical verbs that have been accepted in, in modern language to Google something, right? Um, like a message, I'll message you, or to chat. I mean, there's lots of new words that have come up, just become accepted words. <clears throat> Would you please tell me what the topic is? Computers is the topic, my friend. Any others? Great. Jotish, good luck with your test tomorrow. We've got Raja Swari says, I have just had a brainwave to install antivirus to avoid spare spyware. Brilliant. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Good. So listen, lots of expressions there. Lots of um, different idioms that you can be using to talk about computers. And I think especially if you use English at work, some of these could be very useful. Lovely. Very nice. So that's it. Just give me a moment. I'm going to have um, this drink. Mm. Sound effects are too low, aren't they? It's the ginger. It's very good for you, apparently. Ginger in the morning. But not in the afternoon. I don't know why. Maybe that's a, I don't know, it's a strange thing. Anyway, moving on. Kahoot. We're coming towards the end of the class, the last 10 minutes. We're going to do a review. We're going to do a Kahoot review. I think that's the very last thing up, right? Um, if you don't know Kahoot, maybe you're new here, then this is just a game that we play. You need to go online um, on a different browser. So keep watching me. But in a different browser, you need to look up kahoot.it, which I can share with you. This is the um, address, kahoot.it. And if you go there, in a moment, I'm just going to set it up. In a moment, you can go there. You need to put in your name and a PIN number. But just bear with me while I just set this up. <laughs> It's better on another device. It is. It's a bit tricky because you have to keep watching the screen so you can see the question and the answers. And then on another browser or mobile phone, you can download the app on the mobile phone. Um, then you can also do that. And that way, you can press your answer on the phone. So here we go. I'm just setting it up. Give me a two ticks. Silvio, in England now, it's 10.30. But I'm not in England. I'm in Spain. So it's 11.30. Um, get ready to join. You can join at www.kahoot.it. You need to put your name in. Uh, Jennifer, yes, this is saved on YouTube. All the live lessons are saved, so you can watch them after as well. I mean, you can split screen it. I can't, but you can. There's the game pin. So you put in your name and you put in 6320345. Great. 6320345. As Paola says, if you download on an app or another device, it's easier. Brilliant. Uh, Jobert del Mundo, it's only Thursday. That's right. Only Thursday I have the live lesson. And every Saturday there's a recorded video. <laughs> Vandana says, I'm a couch potato. Okay. Elmir from Germany. Hello. I'm glad you like the tips. Thank you very much. Toy, yeah, there are there are hundreds of comments. Literally, it's like a sea of comments for me. So I can only pick out one or two, I'm afraid. Okay, we've got oh, we've got 200 people in. Great. If you want to just take a few seconds and keep joining us. No name has joined. I think there is music, Emmy. 
Let's turn it up because it's your birthday. Let's turn up the music. <laughs> it is crowded. Yes, you're getting a lot of people. I love from India. Thank you, Abdul. Steve, I have not met Mr. Southgate. Unfortunately, I'd love to meet him. Right. OK, listen, we've got lots of people in. Let me just take off the um, this and let us begin. Right. Start. Here we go. First question. So you read the question and choose the answer. Number one. I use a laptop for blank movies. I use a laptop for blank movies. Come on, this must be a piece of cake for you guys. Easy peasy. I hope. <laughs> so you've got a total of 30 seconds to answer if you're new here. Well done, Nadira, Sergi. Well done. Look at that. Over 200 people got the right answer. I use a laptop for watching movies. So remember, it's a laptop and it's for watching movies. Some of you said to watch. Of course, you can say to watch, but you cannot say for to watch. No. So be careful that with your prepositions. Well done. Let's see who was the fastest. Chris Wu got the right answer and was the fastest, followed by Ung and Lana. OK, question number two. Which is the odd one out? Meaning which word is different? It has a different meaning. Hefty, bulky, big, fragile. Which word has a different meaning? If you've been paying attention, this is also a piece of cake. <laughs> well done, Tanuj. Abed, well done. The answer is fragile. If you remember, fragile means easy to break, delicate. The others, hefty means big. Bulky is big. Big is big. <laughs> there you go. Let's see, is Chris still up there? No, he's not. He's fallen because Marsa has kicked him off the top place. Chris is in second. OK is in third. And look, Paola's in fourth. Nice one. Third question. It doesn't have much blank space. This is a bit tricky. It doesn't have much blank space. Storage, memory, capacity or data. Well done, Marta. Well done, Hung. Abed, well done. Krishna, nice. Well done, 158, got right, all right. Storage, it doesn't have much sport storage space. Some of you said memory, but we wouldn't say memory space, right? You would say it doesn't have much memory, full stop right? Not memory space. The collocation with space is storage space, right? That was a bit tricky, but well done, all you guys. Masa is still up there. Oh, Chris, you've been kicked off. Never mind. Okay, second Paul is coming up third place. Hats off, Fabio. <laughs> Hello, Fabio. Nice to see you and nice to see you in fourth place. And Mitch, 69 places up. Well done. We're moving on to the last question. I need to get my brain in blank. Start thinking clearly. I need to get my brain in blank. Moving mode gear action. <clears throat> dun, dun. Well done. Well done. Hung Marta too. Well done. Good. Tamina, nice. Mohammed Sedi, well done. Katarina, well done. 
Yeah, 181 got that right. Gear, get my brain in gear, right? Get my brain in action kind of sounds right, but it's not the the correct idiomatic expression. Get my brain in gear. That's the idiomatic expression. Okay, excellent. Let's see what the final results are. Fabio, well done. Bronze medal. <laughs> Okay. Wow, Kamal. Out of the blue, where did you come from? And well done. Congratulations. Look at that. Very, very nice. <laughs> uh, excellent. Well done. So listen, here we are. Um, well done to all of you who did really well and got some good answers there. Today, then, we've been looking at computers, right? We've been looking at vocabulary. We've looked at uses of computers. We've looked at um, idioms around computers, the challenges of using computers. You can always go back and watch this video because it is, um, it's recorded on YouTube. So after the live session, you can go back and watch it again. Likewise, if you're watching on Facebook, on the page or the group, you can go back and watch it again as well. Um, if you are, if you happen to be on YouTube, please do remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can find out about upcoming videos. And just to let you know, talking about upcoming video every Saturday, this Saturday, what's the video about? Hmm. It's about something people have asked me for many, many times and I've not really done because it's a really complex topic and it, uh, one video is not enough. But I've decided to go ahead and do it and the video is complex grammar. How do you make complex sentences in speaking? And what is complex grammar exactly? Why is it important? Well, you need complex grammar to get a band seven or eight. So it's really important. So look out on Saturday for the Complex Grammar video. It will, it's released about midday, more or less. Um, just to remind you as well that every Tuesday, I've got this one, the shorts, right? So I am doing the short videos. Every Tuesday, there's a new short video. So you can go and watch that. Um, that's just a minute and helps you practice pronunciation. What else? If you've not joined uh, or followed the Facebook page, please do and uh, come along and join the Facebook group. You're very welcome to join in um, and participate in the discussions and the sharing that we've got there. The, U the YouTube, the website, by the way, is the Key Speaking Academy. At the end of this uh, lesson, let me take some of these off. I get a bit crowded. At the end of this lesson, go to the website, go to the live lessons and you can download I'll show you. You can download the latest um, PDF notes. So all of the notes I've done today, I put on the website. When If you just go to the free live lessons, you'll be able to go down and find the latest live lesson here. You can watch it. You can click and study or you can just download it. Um, and all of the live lessons are here. So if you want the PDFs, you can go and download them here from all those we've done hundreds of live lessons they're all there they're on the website okay so go and have a look and uh, check them out if you like my teaching you may be interested in following my course i have ielts speaking success get a band seven um the moderators have got the links but you can also go to my website and find the link just look for the online course or study with me lots of little buttons to press pop-ups that will show you and you can study with me on the course as well that's a, an online course IELTS speaking success get a band seven plus great so listen guys thank you so much for joining me today any final questions do you have Instagram says Naja Naja I started Instagram and I'm afraid to say I don't like it so much um, and so I don't I'm not active on Instagram. You can find Keith Speaking Academy, but I'm not very active. I'm mainly on Facebook and YouTube, to be honest. Brilliant. Good. <laughs> 
So listen, that's it. I will see you next Thursday. I um, can't wait to be back here again. If you've got any ideas for topics you'd like to do in the live lesson, drop me a message, let me know, or send me an email or message me on Facebook. Anyway, I'll be very, very happy to hear from you anytime. Um, that's it. Please do enjoy the rest of your Thursday. And if you're just starting your Thursday, go and get a cup of coffee. Start the day with a bang. Get your brain into gear. Have a fantastic day. Take care, my friends, and we will speak um, very, very soon. All the best now. Bye-bye. Ginger.